And how's it going guys, Joshua LaFemme here, live in LA, and welcome to yet another creative week with Nick Koo, aka Nick Ben Koo Motion on Instagram. Today we're gonna be talking about traveling through floors in After Effects. Creative week is a time when we step in every day with one of my friends that's more creative and more talented than myself and conquer a lot of really cool topics. G'day guys, welcome back to the Ulafemi channel. My name is Nick and thank you Josh again for that amazing introduction that you uh, do so well with your funky little microphone that I always love listening to. The dulcet tones of Josh. We're gonna look at this uh, video clip by Gibson Hazard uh, on his Instagram. You can go check that out, you will see what I mean. But this really cool funky effect here where he falls through the floor is uh, kinda cool. And we're trying to try and replicate that today. But before we get started, I wanted to introduce to you this new product we just created called the Lyric Video Creator Kit. It has 20 customizable animated lyric templates that you can easily drag and drop into your Premiere timeline with lots of options to customize your text, including colors, textures, and glows. Not only that, we're including 10 overlay video elements to really make your videos pop. Plus, we've added a Premiere Starter project with five different videos to help jumpstart your lyric videos. So what are you waiting for? Grab your Lyric Video Creator Kit today and start making those sweet, sweet Lyric videos. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get the two pieces of footage right now. This will work a lot better if you've got a stabilization system, obviously like a gimbal or that kind of thing. But, and I did this by hand, which is, eh, it's not great, but you know, it is what it is. So I went out and just shot a whole bunch of footage like this. As you can see here, it's very handheld and very janky and shaky, but you get the basic idea. I just found a piece where, you know, it kind of just went straight down. It didn't have to be perfect, but it just had to look like it was going straight down and just sort of hold it there. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag this piece of footage into a new comp. So we're going to make this 1920 by 1080 and 25 or whatever footage you, if it's 2997 shooter, that or 24. Um, we're going to call this falling through the floor. And we're going to make it around 10 seconds. Give us a little bit of birth and we're going to go, okay. Now we're going to drag our piece of first piece of footage here. Um, so just a little sliver here. Oh, that was the first one. Just a bit of sliver of footage here that I've already chosen. We're just going to drag that onto the timeline. Now this is 4K footage, so it doesn't quite fit my footage. So I'm just going to go transform uh, and fit to comp. And that'll just automatically fit to the comp. Now, as you can see here, it's just going to go through and then fall through the floor. Now, because my footage is so kind of horrible, uh, I'm actually going to stabilize it. So, and you may want to do that too, depending on how your footage is, but we're going to drag it out as long as where it about stops, which is around here. All right, and we'll just drag that back here like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pre-compose this. So we're going to go layer and then pre-compose. We're going to move all attributes in the new composition and we're going to call this footage. Uh, we're going to call this floor one. Go okay. Now we're going to double click in here. We're going to go to the end here and we're going to press N to shrink the work area. And then what we're going to do is we're going to right click in this work area and go trim comp to work area. And that's automatically going to make our comp shrink to the size of our, uh, our clip. Now we're going to apply the warp stabilization on this. It's not perfect, but it is uh, better than uh, better than what I kind of have. So if you come up here to the effects and presets once it loads for us, which would be fantastic. I'm going to go warp stabilizer. And we're going to drag that on. And while that's happening, we're going to go to find the other piece of footage. And this is the piece of footage I shot in the garage or the parking garage or whatever you guys call it in the United States or wherever you guys might be. Um, as you can see here, I just tried to pick a piece where it just kind of comes down. I had the uh, camera on sort of a, a, the neck of a tripod to kind of get this shot. Again, if you have a gimbal, it would look so much better but I don't own one personally. So unfortunately I had to do it without, but you get the idea. Um, so yeah, we'll just put this sort of overlapping here like this. So the idea is that it goes through and then it comes back to this shot. And then likewise, we're gonna do the same. We're gonna go transform, fit to comp. So just about where it comes down and then there we go. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna pre-compose this one as well and do exactly the same thing where we, uh, warp stabilize this one as well. So we move all attributes in there. We go floor two. And I'm gonna just shrink this up to here. So the end of it is here. So I just press the uh, open bracket, uh, open square bracket. 
Now what I'm going to do here is press B to shrink out the work area to the start of this clip. And then I'm going to go to the end. And I'm going to press N to shrink in that area. And then I'm going to shrink to work comp. And voila, it is now in there. And likewise, we are going to apply the warp stabilizer again on this. Let that do that in the background. Let's do this magic in the background while we work on everything else. All right, so let's have a look at our warp stabilized footage. It is better. It's not great. I'm not, my handiwork is not particularly good. But what are you going to do? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a new null. I right click and create a new null. And we're going to parent the uh, footage, the floor one, to this null. So we're just going to go, okay. Now, just before it ends, we're going to do the transition point between maybe the two second mark to maybe around here, just before the footage ends, because we want to keep, keep a little bit of that movement. And so we're going to press P to bring up the null. And what we're going to do is we're going to go a bit further on, and then we're, we're going to really take this thing up. Actually, now that I think about it, I should have, I'm going to unparent this one, because I want to actually put this null right to the bottom of the page here. It doesn't even matter if it's off the page, just just because I think that'll be a better position. All right, let's reparent it again. All right, let's go to the two second mark. We're going to start transitioning from here. So we go to the next floor, basically going through the floor. Now it hasn't finished moving, but I want to keep a little bit of that movement so we can kind of keep the realism through because obviously we don't want it to feel like it stopped. I did try this when it had stopped. Uh, it didn't look very real. So I wanted to try, it looks a lot better when it is already, when it's continuing to move. That way it feels like it's going through the floor a little bit. Now, I know that looks really janky, but that'll be fixed in a sec. We're going to cover that up with a nice transition. All right, so now that we've got that there, now this is stabilized as well, we can kind of start bringing this in. Now, this doesn't have to come in right at the beginning of the first keyframe. We can kind of keep it around there. And what we can do is once we've got it kind of lined up, we can kind of parent it. And so what should happen is that you kind of go through and then the footage appears. And there you go. Now, if you're worried that the tail end of that is going to pop on, what you can do is go right click and go time, enable time remapping. And what we can do is grab this first keyframe and we can kind of bring it to the front here and paste it there. And that's just going to make it a still frame. So it just holds in that still frame until we get to there. And then we start moving. So there we go. We've got kind of the basic motion down already. So you can kind of see. But as you can see, it's quite obvious that the perspectives don't you know, change correctly. I might move this out just a touch, just so we've got a bit more room. Um, there we go. Now, this is obviously going to end before that bit ends here. So, so what we can do to make sure that doesn't end is we can right click on that and go do the opposite end, freeze on last frame, and we can make it a still frame just before it ends, just so the texture doesn't end, but that is okay. And we're going to press Option or Alt and the close, the square bracket or the uh, close bracket, close square bracket. And I'm going to pull this out here just so we've got a bit more tail on this end as well, just so they do overlap. I know we said it wasn't really important, but I'm going to keep it that way anyway. All right, so there we go. Now, here comes the bit of the magic. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this null here and we're going to duplicate it right in the middle here. And we'll press Control D or Command D. And we're going to bring out the positioning and we're going to tell, kill all the position keyframes. And what we're going to do here, and make sure you don't move anywhere. What we're going to do here is we're going to turn on the, the 3D. And we're going to pull this down. I like this little widget we've got here from After Effects, uh, from Adobe, which is kind of nice. Now, now that we've moved it in the middle in this black area, which we're going to cover, we're just going to parent this to the current null, which is not 3D. But that doesn't seem to matter because we are going to make it a 3D object. Now, I'm going to make this around uh, minus 800. Oops, minus 800. Now, um, it's not immediately obvious what's happening here, but I'm going to show you in a second. So what we're going to do here is we're going to drag a piece of grunge footage that I have had for the longest time from uh, dear, dear, dear uh, After Effects godfather, Andrew Kramer. And we're going to drag it on here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a 3D layer. And, um, and I'm going to shift click onto the null, the 3D null object here. We'll actually name this. We'll call this foreground element, uh, foreground null. Right. So what we're going to do is we are going to shrink this down so it kind of fits just over the top of this gap here, which is cool. 
Um, and so let's have a quick look at this. So it's obviously a little bit too, it comes in a little bit too early, which I don't want. It's too big, so to speak. Um, but that is, you know, that is the basic idea. We want to make it look like it comes over the top of everything. Actually, I think this is too slow now. Let me make this just a touch faster. Yeah, it looks a bit better. All right. Now, I actually think this is looking too big. It's too big in the frame there, so we need to bring it down. Um, might have to stretch it across because now it doesn't fit in the frame, which is no good. We just need to make this wider. Yeah, I think we're going to need to make this up a little bit longer. So I'm going to just. So what I did was, I just want to make the gap between the top floor and the bottom floor just a little bit wider. So I went to the last frame of this. Uh, so I didn't need to go to the last frame, but I basically just made it so that yeah, the last frame goes up a little bit higher, and so we've got a bit more room to play with. So it looks like it has to go through more floors or more concrete basically to get to where it needs to be. And we'll just readjust this back here like this. All right, yeah, it might be a bit better. Yeah, it looks yeah, it looks like there's more concrete for it to get through. All right, so if that's the case, what we're going to do is we're going to move this down, um, just so that it sits right in the middle there, and we're going to drag this up. That looks a bit better. All right, so I'm going to make this. I'm going to I'm going to scale this up till. Let's see the first frame here. Till you kind of see, you can kind of see where the bounding box is just before it gets there. We're going to just make it around there. It's pretty close. There we go. That actually does look pretty good. All right. So let's have a look at the motion now. All right. There you go. And you kind of see that looks all right, but the problem is that the, uh, the concrete looks very sharp, and as you can see, everything in the foreground is not nearly that focused. So what we're going to do here is we're going to introduce a camera, just for gags, and we're going to make it a 24mm camera, or whatever. It doesn't really matter what it is, as long as it's got depth of Actually, I'm going to make this a slightly different camera. We'll make it a 50 Let's make it a 50 mil, just because it's a bit nicer. All right. Actually, let's make a 24 24 actually looks better. Yeah. Hang on a sec. Yeah, camera, 24, let's make it a 24 mil camera. Yep, make it a bit wider in the frame. All right, so that's obviously readjusted itself. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to scale this up again, just so that it does fit in the frame. There you go. And that should work out really nicely. There you go, nice. All right, so we're going to turn on the depth of field on this. So we're going to go depth of field on and we're going to turn the aperture. We're going to make the focus distance. So it, you, uh, and the aperture, we're going to turn the aperture up as well. So you can't actually, so it kind of blurs the stuff in the foreground, not too much, but just enough. And here you go. It should sort of, yeah. So the, it looks more like we're looking, we're going through, we're going through the cross section of the floor to get there. And I think that looks a lot better. All right. Let's have a look at this one more time. It's pretty good guys, we're getting pretty close. All right, so far so good. Now we're just gonna add a couple of extra elements like piping and things in the middle. So what we're gonna do up here is go to the rectangle tool and we're gonna make a little bit of a pipe that goes in the middle there, uh, nothing too big. We're just gonna center it up. So we're gonna press command, command option home and then press command home, we'll center that up and then we're gonna turn the 3D layer on. Now what we're gonna do is also parent that to the grunge layer so Oh, sorry, the foreground null. So we'll just do that and we'll bring that just underneath the foreground element. Now, as you can see here, it sort of disappears, but that's fine. It's actually right there. So no worries, it hasn't gone nowhere. Uh, gone anywhere, gone nowhere. Where did I go to school? All right, I'm gonna shrink that down so the pipe doesn't look too big. Now I'm just gonna bring this up so that it sits in front of all the other elements. So what happens now is that you can kind of see a little bit of parallax as well going through. So it looks like there's crossbars and stuff as well going through as we go through the, uh, the piping and that kind of thing. And you can actually duplicate that. So we can actually bring this one up as well. So it's we can have one sort of near the top as well. Looks like the cross section of the floor comes up first. It does look a bit fast, doesn't it? Maybe we could just put a bit of an ease in that. I don't like the jankiness of that. So 
Yeah, that looks a bit better. And we can probably put one at the bottom to kind of cap everything off as well. So I just duplicated that again. Um, and this way, I'm just trying to drag, just trying to find the, the, the X. No, what am I looking for? The Y, right? Where's the Y? Why? No, this is, it is, no. I'm clearly not doing this correctly. Um, there we go. Let's just do it from here. All right, here we go. Just right at the edge there. Just to kind of cap off the ends. And just that concrete does look very bright. So I'm just going to bring down the pro the property of that concrete, uh, the brightness of the concrete. So we're going to add a curves adjustment to it. Um, I'm just going to go on here and we're just going to make it just a little bit more contrasty. Because that just does look a bit bright for a cross section or something. Like it would never be that bright. There you go. Not looking too bad. And now that's probably looking just a little bit too crisp in terms of the movement. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the uh, the motion blur up and all those things and just make sure that that is just really selling it with the motion blur. And there you go. That is pretty much it. Well, I'm just going to put a little bit of grading on it just to kind of really sell that idea a little bit more. But for the most part, that is the trick. Um, it's not a very difficult one. I hope that's made sense. We're going to put a little bit of a lumetri grade here just to finish things off. So Lumetri Color, um, I've already done this before, so I know the one that I like, but of course you're welcome to choose the one that you do like. I like this little kind of, um, you know, this cinema kind of grungy kind of look. And obviously you can finish it off with putting on your favorite grain. Um, I got this one from Gorilla Grain. This is not a sponsor. I just like Gorilla Grain. I think they do a good job. Um, just one of my, but you can get grain packs from anywhere, guys. Let's be honest. People making a lot of grain. Oh, did you see there was a mistake there? I saw it. Look at that. Look at that sloppy. I saw it. I saw it, guys. Um, uh, let's see. I can probably cover that up with black, let's be honest. I'm just going to put a black solid behind everything so you can't see it. Oh, uh, no, I should probably cover that up properly. Just a touch, touch smaller. Oh no, now it's there. That's annoying. Um, all right, we'll just move this up just a touch and cover that up. All right. There you go. It's minor. You lose a couple of pixels, but you get the idea. Anyway, guys, I hope that's made sense. It's a pretty fun trick to do. Um, you guys should definitely try it out. See what you think of it. I would love to see what you guys come up with as well. And again, this thing will look so much better if you had a gimbal. So if you've got a gimbal, please use it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time. And if you want to check out everything that's happening with me on the socials, you can go to nickbenku underscore motion and check out all the fun stuff that I'm putting up there. You can ask me questions or you send me a message. I will answer. Anyway, guys, thanks for listening and I'll see you next time. Please make sure to check out all the videos in this week's creative series down in the description below. Remember, you can get a first month of Envato Elements for only $9 in the link below. We've stopped doing the free month offer. That's been an offer that's been going on for about six months. It finally came to an end, but you can still get the first month for $9 dollars every subscription really helps the channel so please make sure to check it out thanks so much for watching guys and as always remember to keep it chill